Greetings! A couple of weeks ago I was watching some YouTube, specifically Matthias Wandel's channel, and I watched the video where he built the Panto, Panto router. So I thought that's brilliant. This could be used in electronics, in hobby at home, and you know you could do quite a lot of it, possibly even past couple of weekends I've been busy trying to make a device like that. I've made it, it's here, it's somewhat similar but I've made a few alterations with regards to uh, what's it going to be used for. Let's go straight to it and um, see whether we can engrave a PCB. This is a test, so I haven't done this before. I've tried on a piece of wood and roughly it kind of worked, but then I made a few adjustments and tweaks and here we are. So this will be the virgin test of the Pantograph or Panto Router, which is a very interesting device and possibly it will be very handy. I've got a few ideas how to use it in electronics hobby. Let's have a look, um, let's see if it works and then I will go over the construction of the device. There we go, it works! Now have a look, this has got to be one of the ugliest PCBs that you've seen. But as a proof of concept it works, I've gone off the lines uh, in a couple of places. Um, and yeah, it does require a little bit more practice, this was my first go at this. I'm using the freehand control, technically it works, it's, it's a workable PCB. I'll need to practice a little bit more to make it somewhat prettier. I'm quite happy with this result, so it's a simple way or easy way to engrave a PCB without the need of uh, CNC, without the need for a computer. Yeah, for a one of quantity, I think that's gonna be even quicker than than using a CNC or etching or anything else. But I've got a few more ideas for this that will be coming soon. I need to still do a little bit of development on this. As a proof of concept, I guess um, it works. This is the engraving bit that I was using and it's absolutely not suited for this very wide angle. I think that's, you know, 80, 90 degrees. That's the only bit I've had um, in my toolbox. So I've ordered a few more proper engraving bit, 30 degree ones, to see how that goes. So those are coming in later, but for the time being I just wanted to see if this thing works at all. Here is an overview of the entire device. First of all, it's made out of, almost entirely out of plywood. I've purchased a single plywood board and I've cut out all the single pieces that I needed for this on a thread saw. And that was a lengthy process but it worked. The size of this thing, I was designing this in mind so I could, whether I could choose 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 magnification, which is set up over here right now to 3 to 1, that I could have the template in the A4 size. So that means I could print out maximum the size of a A4 on a normal printer and then use it to transfer, transfer this to a PCB. All the pieces all the hinges rather are made out of just a four and a half millimeter wire nails that are pressed in not held with anything they actually hold by themselves quite well and the movement is very smooth you can i can manipulate this however i wish and there isn't much friction actually hardly any at this moment in the beginning i was worried that this will be too wobbly so i made the holes a lot tighter later on i've realized that it was causing too much friction and it was cause causing jumpy movement so i've um, enlarged the holes properly to four and a half millimeters stuck those nails in and it's not wobbly and it's quite accurate over here I've got a piece of glass, um, it's actually a glass from a flatbed scanner that I took apart and what that allows me to do is I can put my d design right underneath 
and then the nail, the tracing nail, will slide slides really smoothly across the surface of the glass so that makes for a nice movement and it doesn't turn the paper. It also means that with the PCB po positioned accurately in one spot over here, which right now I need to come up with a better thing for this because right now it's just some steering sticks and some pins that I've hammered in. I could take the PCB out, put it back in and you know continue with something else. For example after scraping of the PCB I can put it up, have a look at it, uh, change the bit to a drill bit and drill all the holes. The design that Mat Matthias Wandel made this is very similar to it, um, almost identical, but I had to make a few adjustments or a few changes. What I found initially when I made it similar to his one is that when moving from left to right, engraving depth was not consistent. So for on the left I was engraving a lot deeper than I was on the right. I was contemplating whether to put some sort of adjustment into the sacrificial board over here so I could tilt it and align it with the plane where the cutter moves. But I thought it will be simpler and easier just to add another pivot point over here. So this will pivot like so. And as you can see I've got two screws on one on each side. And what that allows me to do is unscrew one of them, screw the other one in and that will cause the entire router or pantograph assembly to tilt left or right. And that will even out any difference in the, um, of the cutting plane. As I said before, this is set up right now for a 3 to 1 magnification or ratio change. Anything that's on here 3 times as big, it will be 3 times as small over here. 3 centimeters over here equals to 1 centimeter over here, or whatever unit you pick. I've decided to go for 3 to 1 because this is manually controlled and any imperfections or any shakiness that I might introduce by my hand, it will automatically get shrunk by 3 times. I could switch this over pull those nails out and change this over to those pins and that will change it to 2 to 1. From an A4 size printout template I can get to, let's check, the full width is about 90 millimeters. Okay, 90 by 70 millimeters. 3 to 1 I can do 90 by 70 millimeter PCB. That's okay for most part. Having the pantograph on its own bed means that when I'm done with it I can put it away when I'm done engraving, put it away or store it like this and put it somewhere high up on the shelf so it doesn't stay in the way of anything. Yeah, for plants to come, is, um, I need to come up with something slightly better and more permanent for holding the PCB material over here. For the time of testing this works, I'm more excited about receiving more appropriate engraving bit and trying that out. Here is another look at the PCB that I've just engraved. Please be gentle with the comments on this. Uh, this is the first PCB that I've engraved ever and this is the first time ever I've tried to use a pantograph or panto router and this is the first time ever I have used this particular device to engrave a PCB. But it turned out okay, apart from being a little bit ugly and I've uh, skewed off the lines in a couple of places as far as proof of concept. For now, I hope you enjoyed this little proof of concept demonstration of my pantograph and engraving a PCB board with it. Just a sample PCB board I downloaded off the internet, it's a LED blinky. I'll put the credits in the video, whoever made this. For this video, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And please do subscribe for more random electronics related stuff, for more Mr. Jules and for more stuff that I'll come up with at random. For the time being, take care.